as we thank you, Ms. Cambria, um, as we plan for um, the hiring season in the um, spring. So Ms. Wayne in her new role will be uh, primarily responsible for onboarding and supporting our new hires. And so she has prepared the presentation for today. Good evening, everyone. So I am going to review the 2020-2021 exit survey data with you this evening. So next slide, please. So the purpose of, an ex of exit survey data is to assess the overall employee's experience within your organization and identify opportunities to improve retention and engagement. Next slide, please. So let's discuss the systems that were used in this process. So for this school year, our staff, um, all staff retired or those who resigned received an exit survey through the Talent Ed Perform system. The employees were assigned the um, form in the system and they were able to fill out answer questions and then HR completed follow-up calls if we missed someone or if we noticed that they didn't fill out the information. And then they were also given the opportunity to schedule time with Dr. Bell or myself to discuss any future information they wanted to share. Next slide, please. So here's just the graph of the information, the um, number of non-certified administrators and certified teachers that were surveyed. Next slide, please. And this just breaks it down by category. So we had one administrator leave, 21 certified teachers and three non-certified staff members. Next slide, please. And so in completing the exit surveys, we wanted to make sure that we broke down the reason why by different categories. So as you can see in retirement was the highest category with nine employees who retired, six due to relocation, six due to position elsewhere, and three under the other category. And other just included um, health reasons or unknown reasons that were not disclosed to us when we gathered the information. So the survey questions that were used, what do you believe to be the strengths of the district and what do you believe to be areas of improvement? And I'm not gonna read each bullet for, to you, but I'm going to highlight some key points that I thought were um, positive that gave us information to plan for next for this school year. So students' best interests are the forefront of the district, intentional focus on well-being, which I thought was very important, especially with us being in a pandemic. I think that the district was highly committed to making sure that our staff and our students were well. So I was glad to get that feedback. Next slide, please. Strong culture of care and compassion. I think that that truly speaks to the school district of University City and the things that we're wanting to, you know, as new hires come in, as our staff continue to grow and develop. I love that they spoke on the strong culture and care and compassion. Next slide. So this feedback focuses on the areas that they felt like we needed to improve on. And from the HR lens, the key points that I wanna kind of highlight are stronger focus on retention and then providing ongoing leadership training and development similar to the new teacher meetings. Those are things that are housed out of the HR department. So those were areas of feedback that we wanna take into consideration as we plan for this year and the years to come. Next slide, please recruit and hire more African-American teachers. This is something that we've been working on since I first came into the district as the um, HR generalist. So this is something that's still at the forefront of our recruitment plan. And then another piece that I wanted to highlight was implement mental health resources or classes for employees and students. I thought this was a good suggestion and something that we could definitely partner with our um, different partners that we have in the district as well as in the community and uh, something that we could try to implement. Next slide, please. Are there any questions about the data or anything that I shared? Lisa? Um, so do you feel like this format um, really helps you see if um, there are any particular trends that, like let's say we have building trends or something like that, that we really need to focus on if we're having a retention problem. Do you think this format helps us kind of get to that place? I know I know. like in this public format, there's no way to like 
talk about really individual issues, right? Mm -hmm. But um, do you find a way through what you're doing to find those things if we needed to? Yes, I do believe so. And I also feel like the things that I highlighted were, there were lots of similarities in the feedback as well as the areas of improvement. So anytime I saw multiple of the same thing, those are the areas that I highlighted. So yes, I do feel that way. But I also think just like any survey, there's room for growth and improvement to, you know, enhance questions. And this was our first year kind of implementing it this way. So definitely we can talk, you know, in detail or, you know, collaborate on other ways to include information. Yeah. And then just observationally, like one thing that I noticed, um, like the, on the good part is that many of the things that we put at the forefront of what we're trying to do are showing up in our strengths, which is positive. Mm -hmm. And then kind of interesting, I mean, you didn't focus on this, but kind of interesting, some, like there were a number of things in the, in needs improvement that felt like maybe communication kind of things between different groups, whether it's between different departments or um, between leadership and teachers or whatever, there were a few of them like that. So I thought that was an interesting, just a feedback that was interesting to me also. Definitely. And I think in that case, we have to, you know, take in consideration that this was a pandemic year that, you know, all of us were learning new things and communication could have been a challenge because we were virtual, then we were in person and we're sending emails. It's not the same as, you know, being in person and us, you know, being able to walk to a class and check on a teacher. So I think that that has partially to do with some of that information that was given back just because it was an off year. I'd be interested to see like what it looks like next school year hopefully as long as we stay in session, you know, in person and things like that. That's a great point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can't see any, everyone. So if you have your hand up, please speak up. Do you have any questions or comments? Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I just want to thank you for compiling and sharing this information. And it sounds like you've um, looked at your data and you're planning to, uh, you know, continue the strengths and uh, work on the weaknesses. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions from anyone else? George, I think you're on mute. I think for those who um, left for other positions, I would be interested to know um, you know, salary and benefits are a factor or not. Okay. I should be able to gather that information for you and provide it to Dr. Harden. Anybody else have any other questions? Um, I, I just had one quick question. Um, Candace, um, were there any um, surprises um, for you as far as improvements or um, uh, pros that you saw? It didn't surprise me that people felt supported and that they felt like our culture was compassionate because I truly do believe that like, that's what like sets the UCD school district from any other districts. I think the communication piece was a little like, I just, cause I feel like we're always like sending emails. I feel like as soon as we get information, Dr. Harden, Dr. Bill, like people are constantly communicating that information. So that was a little bit of a shock, but that's why, as I said and reflected, I'm like, I think this just kind of has to do with it being the pandemic year and, you know, us not being in person all the time. And just, there may have been some communication gaps, but I think overall as a district, we communicate well. And I think we put information out as soon as we get it. Gotcha. Well, I, I really, I really uh, like the uh, the idea of an exit survey for for people that are leaving for whatever reason. I, I always think that really improves, um, you know, whatever organization is doing it. So thank you for doing that. No problem. Well, if we have no other questions, um, let's move to item one point two, um, the adoption of the local compliance plan for the division of special education. And I believe this is Dr. Bell. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is an item that we bring to the Board of Education each year um, for review and approval. It is our way of assuring the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education that we agree to, allow, uh, agree to deliver special education services in a particular manner. 
um, we are given three options to choose from. One is to select the model compliance plan, which is offered by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, to accept the model plan, but make revisions, and three, to make our own plan. Uh, the Missouri Compl Local Compliance Plan that is offered by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education is the one that represents the exemplar in special education practices and procedures. In adopting it, we ensure that we are offering services in a manner that is consistent with state and federal guidelines. And lastly, this aligns with our SSD partners. This is the plan that they adopt and it assures and ensures that we are in compliance and in alignment with them in um, how we administer services pre-K through 12. And so we ask this evening that the Board of Education approve this at the next session. Are there any questions? Does anyone have any questions? This is just an information item. I can't see anybody, so please speak up. If... No, Ann. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just my usual that the contracts all say University School District instead of the School District of University City. Um, so if we could get those um, updated with our proper name, I'd be more comfortable. Okay, you're talking about the the contract in the next item. Um, yes, I think I'm in the next item. I've okay because I know that we have it. I think. I yeah, in this one, we are the school district of University City. Okay, I clicked onto the next one on board docs and I apologize. Okay. So for the next one. Okay. And, okay. okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it looks good to me. Are there any other questions? Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Bell. If there's no other questions, um, we will move on to item 1.3 the special school district substitute contract. And this is another information item. And I believe Dr. Bell, this is yours as well. Yes, it is. Thank you. Um, and um, Mrs. Suda, I will make sure that we get this taken care of in our next contract that comes through for the university, uh, for our school district. Um, this also is an agreement that um, is between the School District of University City and the Special School District of St. Louis County. We bring this item to you once a year as well. It is an item um, that is brought for our partnership in providing subs in classrooms where students receive uh, special school district services and in times when they are not able to provide a sub in those classrooms, we then partner with them to provide sub coverage for the day. And we are reimbursed at the rates that are in the document. Um, we recommend again, that this is approved as it is presented at your next, uh, at the board meeting. Are there any questions about this item? Dr. Brenner? Yeah. Um, so, our sub rate is different than this, correct? No, our sub rate is the same. So our daily rate, as well as the long-term rate, they are the same. We just okay. right now, are on, we only have long-term subs serving in, our, in the district in our, on the gen ed side. Okay. All right. That's, is that where my confusion is, I guess? Okay. Okay. Um, I'm confused about the same thing. I was going to ask the same question as Dr. Brenner. Um, I thought I remembered that we raised our daily single day rate for our subs in University City. So I'm sorry, let me, um, let me clarify, I apologize. So our daily rate would be $95 per day if we had subs who were working in the district one day at a time as we have traditionally done. We have not done that for the past couple of years. So last year, as well as this year, we have only hired subs to work on a more permanent basis in our schools so that we, and really this is do, um, done as a mitigating measure and a safety measure for um, COVID-19 too, as a mitigating measure. But if we were to bring in someone to sub on the special education side for one day or for two days, they would pay us at that $95 rate, which is our daily rate as well. That's the rate we would be reimbursed at. Uh, 
All right, are there any other questions from anybody? I don't, I don't see anybody. So um, thank you, Dr. Bell. Okay, thank you. And we'll move to item 1.4, the return to school update. Joanne, you look like you're confused. Do you need us to clarify that further? I am confused, Veronica, thank you. Um, I oh, just, I, I'm sorry, yes, back on the last item. No worries. Um, I, I really got mixed up. Um, could we then go back and get, um, get what was what came before us when we looked at substitute rates for this coming year Could it's that in board doc yeah it's in board docs so you have access to it okay so um, just loaded it to board docs and we can certainly let you know the meeting where we discuss that that would be great if you guys wouldn't mind going back and, and finding that and forwarding that to all of us because i i know i will share the date that it was shared absolutely okay yeah, that'd be great. Okay, that's what I wanted. Thank you. Not a problem. Just checking in. Candace, if you it. can just send that date that we share the substitute recommendations for pay with Julie, and she can send that date to the board so that they can go back and look in board docs. No problem. Okay, thank you. Um, the next item is the return to school update. And um, we are continuing. My goal for today is to give you an update regarding the start of school. And the first slide said that the 2021-20 school year begins and it, it is in full swing. I'm also going to give you an overview of the COVID-19 metrics and give you an update regarding the staff uh, vaccination incentive that this board approved, so thank you. And our goal is always to make sure that we are consistent with our safe, gradual and kind in-person instruction. So we have a um, wonderful return to school planning guide that was prepared by Nancy Cambria. Um, it really further clarifies our mitigating strategies. It is very user-friendly um, and it really chunks a lot of technical information in a user-friendly way for our parents, our community members, our board, our teachers, um, and anyone who wants to know how the school district of University City is continuing to respond to COVID. So the components, we're still safe, we're still healthy. We hope that every child and adult can flourish and we certainly wanna be connected. So this board approved a $600 uh, staff incentive for individuals who are fully vaccinated. We rolled that out immediately upon um, approval from the board, so again, Thank you. We have a system and process in place where um, employees, full-time employees are providing, um, and part-time are providing um, verification through their vaccination card. And we are documenting any medical exemptions from a physician. Next slide. As of today, this is the data. Um, we are at, out of 372 employees who are eligible, we have 251 staff members who have completed their uh, submission of documentation. That puts us at 67%. We have a deadline of the 15th. We do have some employees that we know need additional support that may not check their emails as regularly. And so the HR department is extending support um, to work with those employees. We do believe that this number will increase and I will be discussing um, some additional pieces related to vaccination board um, because this number is, is a bit concerning, um, being brutally honest. And so we have looked at what some neighboring districts have implemented such as mandatory vaccine and for those who are not vaccinated, having a um, weekly a, vac a weekly COVID test and also exempting employees from um, leave if they are exposed due to a school exposure. So um, I have meetings scheduled with both of our associations, UCEA and UCFT next week, where we'll be discussing that. And then I will be bringing a recommendation back um, to this board after those meetings. We're hopeful that on September 15th, um, this number will increase. Next slide. 
these are the metrics as of August 30th. Um, you'll see where the county is. Um, we are increasing as far as our positivity rate, and we know that. Next slide. Um, as you look at the, um, the age spans per 100,000, um, you'll see that information by age group as of yesterday. Um, so we do get this information in real time. Um, there is a consistent flow of information regarding COVID metrics. So we are really well informed around, around what's happening in our community. And um, I had a recent superintendent Zoom call. And if you are not on mute, if you could put your phone on mute, I'm hearing a little bit of feedback. Um, what we encourage our parents to know and understand is that we're not in a bubble. So what one family does can impact 100. And so we are really emphasized into our parents, those safety protocols, those um, mitigating strategies that they can do at home and really the heightened communication around our ability to respond to COVID. Next slide. Um, this is a, another uh, positivity data point um, for individuals that have been tested as of September 1. So this data is as recent as yesterday. And this is a seven day average, I should indicate that. And we are seeing the number of new cases, the rolling average. And if you look at where we were really kind of nervous around you know, November, um, and then you see where we are now um, as school has started, um, yeah, we, we, we need to go in a different direction. And that is very clear based on the data. So our rolling day average, but we're seeing far too many new cases. Um, many of those cases are breakthrough cases. And what we're seeing with them is individuals are not getting sick. They're, they may have like a, a, you know, a cold, those cold symptoms. But we know that the individuals who are hospitalized on ventilators, 90% of those individuals are unvaccinated individuals. These are um, our boundaries. So the good thing is that U City continues to be in the lighter shade of purple. Um, not excited about that, but we're definitely not on an area where um, we're seeing extreme um, cases of COVID. But we do have to be concerned because again, we do not live in a bubble. So this is our dashboard as of August 31st. Um, we still have a 0.1% um, active case among students and staff. We have three active student cases, and we currently have 25 students that are in quarantine. Enrollment, um, these are our numbers by building. Our total enrollment is 2,694 students. We have around 92 students and a reason that this says approximately some of the students are um, not officially enrolled in the district. We're waiting to get documentation. We have some students that are new to the district and technically under MOCAP, which is the state's virtual program, they must be enrolled for one year with their home district. But we do have some students who have transferred from other districts that have um, IEPs and parents are honestly just afraid to send their kids to school. So we're working through those pieces. Um, Launch is our platform for our virtual students, pre, uh, I'm sorry, elementary, middle, and high. So we have some events coming up. Um, our district is closed on Monday, um, September 6th. We have made the decision to have all of our curriculum nights to occur virtually. Um, because of the Delta variant, our middle school has already hosted their um, curriculum night. So our elementary night is on the 7th, high school is on the 8th. We are very much engaged with our healthcare experts and agencies. So we are hosting another COVID-19 vaccination clinic on September 9th. Um, this clinic will be open to anyone in the community. Um, we can't emphasize enough um, the importance of the vaccine. And we know that it is an individual choice and we know that we wanna keep our kids in schools. And so we are heavily um, encouraging people to be informed. Um, you, you know, if you listen to the radio, our own Denise Hooks Anderson 
who hosted a, um, a myth and fact session around COVID, um, the vaccine in February. She has been highlighted on several um, radio uh, commercials, again, advocating for um, the vaccine. She's a very well-respected African-American uh, family care physician in the St. Louis University Network. Um, and so she is a partner of ours and we have many other um, experts that are also heavily advocating for anyone who is eligible to be able to, um, to receive the vaccine to actually get um, the vaccine. We are moving forward with homecoming and it is October 2nd for our game and our parade. Um, we have put in some mitigating procedures for the parade for our younger students. And our goal is to do it safely and also to make sure that our high school students um, can have some normalcy while we are in the pandemic. You will notice that the Hall of Fame event is not here because we made the decision to postpone um, that event. We have contacted all of the inductees and I personally reached out to call them. The response was extremely favorable. Um, they were struggling with coming back to their alma mater and being safe. So it was a, a well-received phone call um, to know that we made the decision to postpone the um, Hall of Fame activities, ideally until spring, um, when we will reevaluate the current state of COVID in Missouri at closer to that time. So I believe that that concludes my um, report. You see photos of our beautiful babies, and they reflect why we do what we do. And these are photos from the first week or second week of school. So I can address any questions that the board may have. If anybody has any questions or comments, please, Lisa, I see you raising your hand. Yes, sure. Yeah. Or Laverne, I see you as well. Lisa, go ahead. I was just gonna make the comment um, I, um, about the vaccination numbers. Um, I know we had kind of a short window for getting the, um, the um, cards in to you all. So anybody who started the vaccination program right when we announced this, they still wouldn't quite be done right now, right? Or they'd just be getting done. Isn't Our that- Our process is that, it's, that they have the first shot. Oh, okay. They don't have to have both. No, anyone okay. that has started the process is eligible and that's in our process. And so people still have until the 15th. Okay. And that, that's what I was, you know, attempting to convey. We believe that we will, our numbers will increase. Um, they have until the 15th to submit. Some folks submitted in two minutes of the announcement going out, but some <laughs> folks have taken them a little bit longer. But at the 15th, is um, when we will have a, um, be able to give more accurate information. But I know that this is something that parents ask about, and I know the board has, has asked about the vaccination rate. So I wanted to give you that update today. I will have another update at our regular meeting in September. Okay, thank you. That, that clarifies something for me. Thank you. Yes, yeah, Sharonica, uh, yeah. the return to school guide, uh, is that a uh, on online guide or is that like a paper guide? It can be paper and it's online. So we, um, it is virtual, it is electronic. Um, is it? Yes, it is okay. on the district's website and it's been sent out twice um, for me and at my Zoom with the superintendent, I went through it page by page at the nine o'clock session and the 5 p.m. session and those sessions are all recorded, archived on our website. Okay, I just wanted a copy, wanted to know where I could get a copy from, that's all. I can send you, um, we can send you a hard copy. Okay, I appreciate it. No problem. Julie, can oh. you note that and send um, board member for Williams a hard copy of the Return to School Guide? I sure will. Thank you. Thank I'll you. also get one, uh, Sharonica, Absolutely. if you don't mind. Thank you and if so all much. of the board members would like an elect a hard copy, we can certainly mail that to all the board members. It's not a problem. I don't so need if you want a hard copy, just let, let Julie know. I'm I'm okay. I don't need one. I, I saw it electronically. Thank you. Okay. Joanne. 
Yes, thanks for the update and thanks for the effort at um, protecting everybody um, in all the ways we can. Do you know what vaccination rates look like among our students who are eligible for the vaccine? Not yet. Um, we have the students who were a part of um, our vaccination clinics that we had last school year and the ones that we've had this, this school year, the numbers are low, they're around, um, and I don't know if Gary's on the phone, on the call, but we have probably around 25 to 30% um, for eligible students and those students who've been vaccinated. Our nurses have captured that information. We are now starting to capture the information for students who may have gotten the vaccine over the summer. Um, but our numbers for the clinics that we hosted and those who may have gotten it other places was around 30%. Um, we believe that with the Pfizer um, vaccine receiving full authorization, we're hopeful that that number um, will increase. So that is some of the work that the nurses are doing now, particularly at the high school, um, to really understand the, who is vaccinated um, and who isn't, because that does impact our um, contact tracing and also how we quarantine. And, and are they looking for the factors that feed into our kids who are not vaccinated? What do you mean? What I'm saying, I'm sorry. Are, are they looking into factors to see why the kiddos who are not vaccinated have not been vaccinated? There is a strong um, dis, um, belief, lack of belief in the vaccine in the African-American community. So we know exactly why children are not getting vaccinated. There are a small number of students who have health um, ailments uh, pre-existing health conditions that um, where there's some hesitancy, but overwhelmingly there is a um, lack of trust in uh, the vaccine, primarily in the African American community. Yeah, thank you, mm -hmm. Dr. Harden. Your numbers are correct, and to that same end, we have uh, vaccination clinics set up for next week on the 9th from three to six that are open, and then on October 14th we have another vaccination clinic set up from three to six. Uh, that we'll be hosting at 7700 Olive. Do we have any um, student ambassadors that could maybe kind of get the word out? We, um, go ahead, Gary. Currently, we do not. Um, we have been in talks with um, St. Louis County to join in on a promotion of a Sleeves Up STL that would include uh, student ambassadors. Obviously, for us, it would be Sleeves Up U City. Uh, but we have not um, got our ambassadors enrolled in that program yet. So Michael um, Simmons is a high school student. He's a rising, well, he's currently a senior, um, and he is on the Washington University's Saliva Study Task Force. He's a part of that advisory committee. And I personally believe that it is better for students to talk to students. I am not comfortable positioning or propping up our students in this way, this is a very sensitive uh, subject in our community. And I don't wanna put students against students. And I know that wouldn't be the intent, but that can easily happen around this topic. So where it happens organically, I know that Michael is an ambassador. He may not be an official one, but he is certainly um, speaking about the vaccine. He's speaking about his participation on that leadership role with WashU. And so I believe that that is a better approach versus us lifting up students um, in this way. This is a very, um, parents, I talked to a mom the other day and we were both in tears when we got off the phone. You know, she's afraid to give her baby the vaccine, but she wants him to come to school. And, you know, and I told her, she said, well, what should I do? Tell me what to do. And I said, I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you what the science is telling me. Let me tell you what I see on numbers. You know, let me tell you what I'm seeing in our schools. And she made the decision on her own to get her son vaccinated because she knew the benefit of him being in school. So parents are not withholding students from getting the vaccine because they just want to, they're afraid. And that fear is real. And so we have to lean into that and try to be empathetic in our approach. And, and that is the approach that we have taken. Um, and that is the approach that we will continue to take. Any other questions? Well, real quick, I did want to say uh, anecdotally, uh, the uh, the process of 
getting the students into the uh, schools um, has been, it's very, it's organized very well and it's been very easy. Um, I really appreciated it. Um, and I, I think it's a great way to kind of keep the kids um, safe when they are entering and exiting the school and the parents and everyone else. Uh, and also you, uh, my mother-in-law was very impressed with it and you impressed her in one day and I haven't impressed her in 10 years. So congratulations. So Thank that being said, <laughs> Thank that you. being said, uh, we can move to item. If no one else has any questions, we can move to item 1.5. I just want to just real quickly, just again, thank the board for their support, for their pushing for their questions. Um, I think it is really reflective of the University City community. And I know you have a pulse on what's happening and sometimes no more than what I know. So I thank you for being a partner in keeping our students safe and our staff safe and for supporting some of the, me the measures that we have in place. Other school systems, other superintendents do not have that support. So I'm very grateful um, to have this board leading during this um, time of crisis. So thank you. Thank you. Do you do you mind if I just say something really quick um, after that? Thank you. But I, I also want to thank the community because, for instance, I just I just went to PTO um, meeting and you know there were lots of issues that the parents were bringing up, but masks and things like that were not on the agenda. They, it's not, it's like a non-issue in our community. We know we need to make it safe. So it's easy for us also as le leaders to go forward because of our community. So I really thank our community also. Thank you. And we, if no one else has any other comments, um, we'll move to item 1.5 the new and or revised policies. And this is just an information discussion item. Okay. I think that we have a uh, policy committee starts with BCB, correct? Hold on. Correct. All right, I'm trying to get into my screen right. Um, so, Policy BCB is um, uh, talks about the duties of board officers, and um, this has been um, updated by MSBA. <clears throat> it's not a required um, update by law, but they um, they wanted to make sure that it was very clear what what the replacement pr procedures were if a president left in the middle of a year rather than during reorganization um, or if a member uh, just ceases to be a board member period so um, those are the main things besides some kind of just you know wording changes that happened in this that um that you will see in this new policy. So are there any questions? Uh, yes, Lisa, I had a question. In <laughs> fact, I have several. Uh, I did read over the policy and there are a lot of proposed changes that I think we as a board should talk about. Um, there are definitely some that I wasn't quite sure about. Uh, not only were there changes, but there were inserts. Uh, that I would I would like to have a more discussion about so I could get a better understanding of, of just what this entails. Uh, can, so I don't I don't know. Would, would you th that's what the purpose of this meeting is right now. So what what is it that you need more information on? Well, first of all, I, I wish that we had had uh, had the uh, we had been afforded a uh, 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 the opportunity to have a conversation about some of the changes that were uh, that that were made to the board officers, the the policy itself, it's just a lot here that I'm not I, I'm not understanding, and I don't know why I'm not understanding it. But uh, it looks like it's changing our whole procedure uh, for uh, for electing officers. The, now, the the procedure, it, it isn't changing the procedure that happens um, at in April at all. Um, that will continue to happen every year in April, um, the reorganization of the board. 
what it is doing is, is adding a provision to outline if there was ever a situation where um, <clears throat> um, somebody resigns for the pre from the presidency within that term from April to April. Mm -hmm. That's all, it's just an addition of that, but no other, like the whole reorganization of the board would be the same. So what about the section on vacancy and the section vacancies and the section on reorganization? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, some of those talk about um, the, the, if the president is not, um, if the president is not able to serve or just not want to be president or whatever that may be, uh, that the vice president will automatically assume the office of president? I mean, is that what we've been doing in the past? Well, fortunately, I don't, in, in the history I know of the board, we have never had to encounter this. Um, right. This would be kind of an emergency thing. Like th this would be like if in November something happened and your president couldn't um, serve anymore. And then the vice president would move to the president's position until the reorganization in April. Okay, until April. Yes. Okay, and, then, and, I, and I do understand that, but I think that that should say that. I, it doesn't exactly say that in, in, in the way it's written up because I probably would have understood it a little bit better if it had denoted that, but I didn't see that. Um, so I, it, it, like I said, it, it just seemed odd to me. It didn't seem like what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. it, 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 there were some changes there that I just didn't recognize. And, and it could be because we haven't had that situation to come up. Well, yeah, yeah. and I think, I think, the, I think MSBA uh, did this to clarify because some other school districts have had the situation come up. And like I yeah. said, we, we've been lucky enough not to have something like this happen. So, right. um, and, yeah. and I, I read what MSBA, uh, I read the uh, administrative portion mm -hmm. of what MSBA uh, is recommending. And they did say it wasn't law or, or anything like that, but they did recommend it. And to be honest and truthful with you, the only thing that I understood in that statement was that um, if the president was, for whatever reason, was not able to serve, then the board, it would take a majority vote from the board to put in another president. Am I right or wrong? You, okay, you're I'm, talking I'm looking about- at the, I'm looking at the administrative notes that you all, put in from MSBA. Okay. So I think you're referring to, um, okay. I think you're re referring to a new place. There's a second new thing here. All right. So we, we always have the reorganization of the board after the election. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So I think what you're, you're referring to and you tell me if I'm wrong, is that mm -hmm. they've also made it so that the majority of the board can vote to reorganize any time during the year, basically, um, if need be. So this is not even like the president can't serve anymore. It would be that at least four members of the board have decided that they don't want to have the people in positions that they have in positions and they vote to reorganize the board in the middle of the year. Okay, so this is something new? Yes. Okay, um, okay. And Laverne, uh, just a side note there, because uh, we were on the policy committee. Mm -hmm. we you're right. We went through that um, just to kind of check it, and I understand what your concern is, but it's, uh, you know, once we clarified, I think it was pretty clear, so I think it's nothing that would be um, of concern, I think, other than just sort of helping to clarify the process in case that happened. Yeah, well, yeah, and I understand that, Tracy, but like I said, there were just some things in there that I didn't recognize, some procedures that I didn't recognize us having. And, it, and not only that, there were some procedures that I felt did not directly relate to what MSBA was recommending. 
Okay. We didn't. We didn't. Uh, this you know, We did not add anything. This is all MSBAs. Um, we we did not even edit a word. So even the uh, even the part on vacancies. No. And no, that was not us. That was MSBA's edits. These are all MSBA additions. Like I said, I think this all came from I, I difficulty some other boards have had um, when they've had. Um, present leave or or they've had problems maybe with their elect their who they elected and wanted to reorganize in the middle of the year um, well, okay but that's not I mean if we're a well-functioning board neither one of those things would happen you know mm -hmm. like yeah you know, that's kind of yeah that's kind of what caused me pause because I know that's not how we function in the past and we've not had a problem and that as far as I know and Laverne, that, yeah, so that all, we just basically reviewed this and approved it, but did not make any edits. So even the the section on vacancies and reorganizations, those are not edits by us, those are MSBAs? Right, correct. There were no changes to this, we just reviewed it. Okay, all right. Um, I want to jump in too, um, because we have another policy, BCA-1, which is the board organizational meeting. So that policy still stands about how after the election, we, we organize our officers and we adjourn the whole board and, and re-elect officers every year after the election. So this looks like an addition to that policy, which will still stand. That's correct. And that would be our regular our regular way of working these these are just i think these are just if there's kind of like an emergency situation okay right? okay yeah I, I just wish it said something uh you put something like that in that language that, okay. that is I'm, for emergency purposes. Laverne, if you have a suggestion of what what wording you would like that would be great uh, um i it's always hard for me to do work in the middle of the meeting um, to, to well, respond stuff. Well, I understand. I understand that. And that's why I wasn't, I was kind of hoping that we would have had a chance to discuss it before now. But what I'll do, Lisa, is that I'll just uh, email you. Okay, that's if, fine. If that's okay, I'll that's just fine. email you. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. And if we need to, we can always hold it. So the work, the work session is our work on the board policy. Um, you know, whenever there's a, just to kind of go over it again, whenever there's a, a, a B policy, which is one of the board policies, the yeah. um, the policy committee will review it first, but okay. we, always bring, we always bring it to work session for the whole board to review so that we have a chance to do exactly what we're doing today to clarify things. And okay. then you don't vote on it until the board meeting anyway. So right. this, is, this right. is our chance to work on it. No, so, I understand that. Okay. So if there is a, like, I'm glad we've been able to clarify what you were confused about. And if there, and I apologize, my, my dog, but if there, um, <laughs> if there is um, some wording that you would like us to consider, uh, please send it and we'll, right. we'll, we'll figure that out. Okay. Okay. I appreciate it. And, and, and if we do, we, we can just if we have to, if it's not, if it's something major, we'll what we'll do is we'll um, review, or we'll edit it, send it back to MSBA for review, then bring it back to the October work session. Okay, Lisa. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. Um, any other questions on the policy? Okay. Um, but let I think. Is it Kashina next? <laughs> okay. I sign up again. Um, the, this is a policy, it's an MSBA recommendation. They are taking one policy and they are breaking it into two policies. So the first policy, IGCD was the original policy and it concerned uh, virtual learning. They are dividing it into IGCD and IGCDA. IGCD covers district instruction that is that goes to distance learning for some reason or another. For example, um, if we were to go to distance learning for um, snow or inclement weather, 
or if we were to go to distance learning uh, because of the pandemic. This policy would govern or guide us in that. IGCDA uh, governs or guides the selection of virtual learning versus in-person learning as an option. Gina, why don't you see if they have questions about IGCD? Okay, any questions? Okay, and IGCDA is the complement to that, which is separating um, when you make a choice to have virtual learning versus in-person learning for your child. Um, and we use uh, mocap or launch for that purpose. Are there any questions about that? Okay, thank you. We just um, ask and recommend that you approve the policies as presented at the next board meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bell. Um, if no one has any questions, we can move on to item 2.1, the board governance goals review. And this is a discussion and information item. Make sure to pull up. And am I doing this one? Nancy, can you advance a slide, please? All right, uh, this is the bullet board goal review for 2021-2022. Uh, next slide, um, and this is our vision where all students graduate college and career ready. And our mission is to transform the life of everyday students every day. And every year the Board of Education takes a self-evaluation to determine the strengths and opportunities for the board. And we met on July 21st, 2021 at a special board meeting to determine the goals for this, the 2021-2022 school year. And um, the goals were based on area of needs identified by the board during a self-evaluation. And we picked no more than two to three goals. Um, objectives are SMART, and that stands for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, timely, using our board self-evaluation as a measurement and the action steps have a person responsible and a date to be completed. Next slide, please. And the foundational principles for effective government are right there. The board clarifies the district purpose. The board connects with the community. The board employs a superintendent. The board delegates authority. The board monitors performance and the board takes responsibility for itself. Next slide. And here's board goal number one. And what I'll do is I'll just go over the first board goal and then we can, we can discuss it um, if, you, if anybody has anything to add. Um, so board goal number one is the student achievement. Uh, board members will review the material prior to the meeting and ask deep questions regarding student achievement. And I can't see everybody, so if you wanna um, go ahead and speak up, that'd be great. Anybody have any discussion on that? Okay, uh, well, board goal number two that we decided on was the board roles, or it's under the board roles of government and governments. The board takes responsibility for itself and the action step is to continue the governance core to help better define our board roles. And uh, next slide, please. Sorry, I'm working off two things here. Okay, uh, board goal number three. Uh, this goes under, this is about the strategic plan to regularly review the strategic plan and align the board items to strategic priorities, better familiarize oneself to the strategic plan and have it available to review when needed. Now, I just wanna make sure this is, this is the consensus that we came about um, within our, our special session. Um, these board goals make sense to everybody. And um, I, I believe we've already started some of them. So. Um, does anybody have any comments or questions? Yes, uh, uh, yes, Matt, when we say uh, align board items, are we 
are we talking about the goals? Align, uh, we have in there align board items to, to strategic priorities. Are we talking about align board goals to strategic priorities? Um, I, I think, think we, I, what, we, what we discussed on that was um, making sure that the board items that we, we discuss are referenced, they're referenced to the strategic priorities, like which priority they're being referenced to is, is that? You, yeah, you mean the board goals though. I thought we discussed that yeah. in terms of the board goals. Is that something different? Yeah. No. Yeah, this is this is like saying- Agenda that, items, right? Yeah, this is like knowing that the oh, agenda okay. items are, are some, what strategic, what part of the strategic plan they're related to. Um, okay. I know we talked about that. So th I, that's what this, this goal is. No, I just wanted to get that clarified. No, that's great. I yeah. appreciate it. And I'm glad you said that because yeah, that is that does that does clarify. Okay. And we yeah, and we and we had talked, I mean it's in there, but we had talked about having <clears throat> the um strategic plan goal um priorities and things like physically in front of us, you know. Right. So right. yeah, I remember that, Lisa. Thank you. I'm just wondering where we have the strategic plan electronically located. Is it board docs? Is it Google? Is it um, the website or all of the above? Julie, do you know? Yes, um, exactly. Go ahead, Julie. Or Sharonica. Yes, George, it is actually um, in board in the, it is on the website, I believe. And if not, it needs to be updated, but I believe it is there. It's not there. It is 100% there okay. and it I has so. also been sent to the board per your request at a prior meeting. So the scorecard um, that is attached to the strategic plan and the full plan is um, on the website with the full with the five strategic priorities. The granular level, which are the worksheets, that is not on the website, but all of the five priorities, what our focus areas are is on the website and the scorecard has been sent to all of the board members. Thank you for that clarification. I think it's on the members of uh, all of us to, to review that, to make sure that we, because again, that is one of the, the board goals here is to film, familiarize ourselves with that plan. So thank you for telling us um, where we can find it if, if we didn't already know. Any other questions or comments about the, the board goals for this year? All right. Um, if not, we can go ahead and move to item 3.1. Thank you, Nancy, for doing the slides. Um, this is citizen comments, 3.1. Sure. Um, the Board of Education is inter very interested in citizen input and concerns and has allotted a period of 30 minutes during our board meeting for citizens and staff to address us. We ask that remarks be limited to four minutes and that you please speak to issues. The board cannot discuss personnel matters or individual student concerns in public sessions. Students who wish to commit or comment about a particular agenda item may do so during the citizen comment section. No comments will be taken from citizens during the regular board meeting or work session. Attendees wishing to participate in the citizen comments section of the meeting must sign up in advance prior to the meeting with their name, address, email, phone number, and topic of the comment. Comments will be read during the comment part of the meeting. It is our intent to conduct our meetings in a manner that is at all times respectful to our students, staff, community members, and fellow board members. Are there any citizen comments for tonight? Yes, we have one comment. Comment right. is from Andrew Mossman. And he has sent in to the school board, superintendent and Pershing elementary leaders. I noticed recently that the Pershing elementary rain garden had been killed by what looked like a massive dose of pesticide, which contains carcinogenic chemicals. So much of the chemical was used that even the grass around the garden was brown and dead. On Tuesday, I saw New Leaf Lawn and Landscape LLC, overseen by Stormwater STL, clearing up what remained. A Stormwater STL worker told me that they were the contractor inspector for the project 
and that new leaf lawn were their subcontractor. I asked one of the new leaf lawn workers what was sprayed on the rain garden. He replied, it's the kill everything chemical. My boss mixes it up, something like Roundup. As we spoke, I saw a line of children walking toward the garden led by their teachers. I have two questions. <laughs> One, why was this done? And two, why was this done the way it was done? Kill everything chemicals like Roundup expose children and their caregivers to known car carcinogens. A simple internet search will show that there can be other har very harmful effects. The chemicals also poison the air, soil, and surrounding vegetation. The poison remains in the environment unless its effects, unless its effects are remediated. The people who work for Pershing Elementary School, all school district workers, have done, have done um, to so much, much to ensure that their children have been healthy and cared for during the pandemic. For what you've done to teach, nurture, and protect people since March 2020, you have done nothing. You have nothing but my admiration and respect. You've got to be some of the most tired people on earth. But that's what makes what was done to the rain garden and how it was done so, inexplic so inexplicable and shocking. Thank you for listening to my concerns. This concludes citizen comments. Thank you, Julie. Uh, since there's no other comments, um, can I get an can I get a motion to move into exec session with, um, or can I get a, a motion to approve closed session um, with the, the discussion of uh, personnel matters and a legal matter? So moved, Brenner. Second more. Discussion? All right, uh, Dr. Stewart? Aye. Joanne? Aye. George? Aye. Tracy? Aye. Laverne? Aye. Lisa? Aye. Um, I have a point of order. I think Dr. Stewart has to be visual to vote. Oh, yeah, I, I believe that is. Aye. All right, thank you, Dr. Stewart. Um, and then I. And then, uh, so do you want to, we have a different link for that. So do you want to take five minutes? Is that good for everybody? Sure. Okay. I will see you back. It's, we'll say 6.58. All right. See you then. Thank you. Good evening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.